All right, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Josh Nelson. I'm the CEO of Civic Shout, uh, which we'll be talking through today. Um, first, I want to give a big thank you to Action Network for hosting today's uh, Civic Shout demo. Um, and thank you to everyone here for joining us. Um, so today I'm going to walk through Civic Shout, the new platform for opt-in email and SMS acquisition. Uh, one quick housekeeping item uh, before we jump in. Please uh, feel free to ask questions uh, anytime via the chat. I may stop and answer them in real time uh, if I see them, uh, or I may circle back toward the end. Uh, but either way, we want to make sure that all questions are answered by the end. Uh, if a question uh, occurs to you later, or, or if you want to reach out to learn more, uh, you can always reach me at josh at civicshout.com. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, so I've been working in digital for about 15 years now. Um, and in that time, I've had the opportunity to help hundreds of nonprofits and political campaigns grow their email communities. One thing I've found over the years is that growing email lists the right way with real opt-ins who actually want to hear from you is a hard thing to do. A big part of that is due to how challenging and frankly annoying it is to run Facebook ads. And part of that is also due to the fact that digital staff uh, are very often overworked and under-resourced. We built Civic Shout to address those issues uh, and specifically to make it as easy and painless as possible for progressive groups and democratic campaigns to grow their email lists. Um, so I want everyone to do me a quick favor right now. Uh, open up your browser uh, or a new tab and type civicshout.com slash partners. Uh, into your browser. Um, so you'll have that URL handy. Uh, that, that page again, it's civicshout.com slash partners. Um, that page includes everything you need to know about how Civic Shout works. And it also has the link to sign up uh, if you'd like to do that. Uh, there's a big yellow button that says try Civic Shout. Uh, so with that, we'll jump right into the specifics. Um, so Civic Shout is one part network. Uh, and one part purpose-built technology that exists solely for email and SMS acquisition. Once you join the network, we will set up your account with your logo and brand colors. You can then create branded petitions within the platform and apply your suppression file to ensure you're only getting new opt-ins who aren't currently on your email list. Civic Shout has a credit system where one credit is worth one new opt-in supporter who's fired up and eager to hear from you. You can purchase credits for $1.25 each directly from your petition dashboard inside of Civic Shout. You can also earn credits by promoting your petitions. So for every four people you get to sign one of your Civic Shout petitions, you'll immediately receive a credit worth one new opt-in supporter. Civic Shout partners are welcome to purchase credits, earn credits, uh, or purchase and earn credits anytime. There's never any obligation and there's no cost associated with the service uh, other than the $1.25 cost per acquisition for purchasing credits. Any questions at this time before I, I screen share to walk through the platform? Feel free to type any questions in the chat. All right, well, again, just uh, just type those questions anytime as they come up uh, and I'll answer those uh, as they see as I see them. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen here so you can see the uh, the admin side of, of Civic Shout. So this is what you might see um, when you log in. Um, this account that we'll be using today for the demo is called uh, DemoWorg, uh, an amazing uh, progressive organization. Um, so I'm going to sort of walk through the steps here and show you just how easy it is to use Civic Shout to grow your email and SMS communities. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is create a petition. Uh, so I'm going to click the create petition button. And first you'll need a banner photo. Um, we've got some tips here on what makes effective photos, um, what we found to work well, um, things like 
um, not overlaying graphics and using uh, images of people, uh, particularly their faces, uh, whenever possible. Um, so I'm going to upload a photo here. I've got some sample content lined up for us. Uh, and so this is going to be a petition about Clarence Thomas. Uh, this is our image cropper. So I'm going to sort of zoom in here, zoom in on his face, save image. And we've got an image for our petition. I'll scroll down a little bit. You know, there's a link here for some easy ways to find copyright free photos if you don't already have one. Uh, you're then going to need a headline, um, sort of the title uh, of your petition, the first thing people see when they uh, land on your petition link. Uh, I've got some sample content here. This one, pretty straightforward impeach Clarence Thomas. Copy that, paste it in there as the headline. Uh, you also need a description. It says here, motivate your reader by explaining why this issue matters to them. I've got some, some descriptive text here. You don't need much. Um, as you can see, just a couple short paragraphs um, usually does the trick. I'll copy and paste that. Uh, you can then select tags. Uh, I'm going to call this one uh, democracy since it's about uh, impeaching a Supreme Court justice. Uh, you can then enter a post action URL. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm just going to use Google. Probably not what you would do. Um, you would typically use a uh, an Act Blue link or a follow up action or a survey or something like that. Um, you do have the option, uh, mostly for campaigns and PACs, to include a paid for by uh, disclaimer. Uh, if you enter that here, that's going to automatically show up at the bottom of your petition uh, in the sort of FEC approved uh, box at the bottom. See, we've got some uh, chat messages coming in. So question from Cassie, does Civic Shout integrate in any ways with Action Network, for example, using petitions from AN? Um, so there is a Civic Shout uh, Action Network integration, um, which I'll show you how to set up uh, in just a couple minutes. Um, that goes in the direction of, you know, from Civic Shout to Action Network. So if you have the Action Network integration in place, uh, anybody who signs your Civic Shout petition uh, is going to be automatically added to your uh, Action Network group uh, in real time as they sign, uh, and that'll be associated with the particular petition they signed. Um, so you can target those people with an email, um, access them with an Action Network report, uh, et cetera. A uh, question from Morgan here as well. Uh, will those tags attach to each user that signs or does it put this petition with like petitions? Um, it's, it's more the latter there. So Civic Shout uses um, the, the tags here to understand what issues people care about um, so we can help show them uh, other uh, petitions we think they might be interested in. Um, so we've got everything here for a basic petition. As you can see, you know, it's a very simple uh, petition creation form. Um, if you've got the content ready uh, in advance, um, you can often set up a petition in uh, less than a minute. Um, and in fact, you know, since we're not trying to, um, you know, replicate or in any way replace uh, your, your action network or your every action or action kit, uh, et cetera, um, what we recommend is taking um, a, a high performing petition that you've already used, that you've already sent out to your email list, that you've already used on your um, CRM, uh, and sort of replicating that content here uh, and using it for list growth on Civic Shop. Uh, so I'm going to click Save and Review Petition. That's going to show us a preview of exactly what this petition is going to look like once we publish it. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, the petition is sponsored by Demo.org. It's got their name right there at the top. Uh, it's got their logo at top left. Uh, it's got their a little strip of their brand color, which is the screen. Uh, the photo we selected, the headline we selected, uh, descriptive text we, we pasted in. Um, the descriptive text is truncated, so you know uh, an end user on the site could read more to, to pop that open. All of our petitions require first name, last name, US zip code, and email address, uh, and they all have an optional field uh, for mobile phone number as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click publish, and it's prompting me here, you know, before publishing, you'll need to set up email list suppression. Um, so we want to make sure that um, when you set up your Civic Shot account, when you publish your first petition, um, you upload a suppression file um, to make sure that um, the new members that you're gaining through Civic Shout um, aren't uh, already on your email list uh, and are in fact new. 
Um, so it's going to prompt us to do that here before we publish our first petition. Um, so I'll click set up uh, suppression. Um, we've got a built in uh, SHA-256 uh, hashing tool, uh, hash file generator. We use SHA-256 because it's much more secure than the uh, MD5 uh, hash hashing algorithm that a lot of folks use. Um, and so you're welcome to create a SHA-256 uh, file on your own of your email list if that's something um, your organization is able to do. Um, or you can use our very fast, very secure uh, SHA-256 hash file generator. Um, so that's linked here from the suppression page. I'll click over to that. And you know, at the bottom, there's this piece you'll see, your list security. Um, we take security extremely seriously. Um, and that's why, as it says here, all data is processed in the browser and never leaves your machine. Um, what that means is when you're uh, encrypting uh, a CSV of your email list using this hashing tool, everything happens on your computer in your browser. Um, so you can, in fact, uh, if it makes you more comfortable or if you, or if you just want to test it, um, you can turn off your Wi-Fi um, and encrypt your email list and, and hash your email list. Um, without being connected to the internet at all. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because it'll kick me off Zoom, um, but wanted to let you know that that's an option. Um, so to hash your email list using our hash file generator, um, you're going to click that browse for file uh, button. Um, I have a very small sample suppression here I'll use. I selected that. I'll click generate hash file. It's already done because it was a very small file and because the tool is very fast. Uh, I'm then going to click download hash file. It's going to download that directly to my computer. I'll head back over to this suppression tab uh, within the Civic Shout app. Now I'm going to select that new file. In this case, hashed sample suppression. I'll upload that. Click the upload hashed CSV button. Uh, it's already done. And so three emails are being suppressed. I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'll see now that I have a uh, draft petition. Um, that we just set up a couple minutes ago. And it's prompting me to review and publish that petition now that I've got a suppression in place. Um, so I'm gonna click publish. And it's gonna you know, prompt me, uh, are, you know, are you ready to publish? Once published, you can start earning free credits by sharing your petition with your email and SMS lists. Yes, let's go ahead and publish now. Success, your petition is live and ready to share. Um, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and you can see your petition dashboard. So any petition that you publish um, on Civic Shout uh, has its own dashboard. Um, we'll walk through this in just a second. First, I'll show you um, what the live petition looks like. Um, so you get the, the link here in the share your petition box. I'll click that. And here's the live petition um, that we just published. See, it looks exactly like the preview uh, look that we, we looked at a moment ago. Uh, and if you scroll to the bottom, I'll zoom in a little bit, make this bigger. Uh, it's got our, our standard uh, opt-in disclaimer language. Um, crucially, um, one thing to note here is that it says, by signing, you're agreeing to receive, receive periodic messages from demo org. So when somebody signs your Civic Shout petition, um, they're not joining Civic Shout's email list. They're not joining anybody else's list um, just by doing that. I'll go back over to the dashboard here and show you a, a few key pieces you should understand. Um, first and foremost, you've got your credit balance. Um, so I mentioned previously that we have a credit system where one credit is worth one new opt-in supporter uh, and that there's really two ways to uh, acquire credits on your petition. Um, you can buy them for $1.25 uh, each. You may see this buy credit button here. Um, and you can earn them by promoting your petition link. Again, this same link here. Uh, and for every four people you get to sign your petition, you're going to get a credit worth one new opt-in supporter. And so any given time, you've got a credit balance. This one has a balance of zero because we just published it. We have not uh, purchased any credits. We have not earned any credits. Uh, underneath that, you can see there's sort of three pieces that go into that. Um, so your credit balance is going to be uh, how many credits you've earned. Uh, if any, how many you've purchased, if any, minus uh, how many have been redeemed, uh, if any. When you have credits on a petition, um, it automat we're going to automatically show that to grassroots activists who are 
who are in the network who are coming through the system at any given time. Um, so all you have to do is publish your petition and either earn or buy credits. Um, we do the rest. We show your petition to people when they sign uh, and opt into your list. Um, you get their contact information and we subtract one credit from your balance. Uh, another piece I'll show you here at the bottom uh, is sort of your, your contact dashboard um, where you can uh, you know, grab the contact information for folks who opted into your list. Um, you'll see here, connect your CRM to automate syncing. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Under that, you've got a um, couple totals here. Um, petition signers, total number of people that have signed this petition. Uh, we've got a from you count. Um, so it's going to be people that you've got you've gotten to sign the petition, um, perhaps by promoting it to your email or SMS list. Uh, and there's a from us total here. This is how many people Civic Shout has gotten to sign your petition. Um, within that, there's a few uh, check boxes. Um, so if you only want to download the folks um, since your last download, um, you can check this box since last download. Uh, if you only want the new to list, uh, folks, you can check this box. Uh, and there's a, a SMS opt-in box that you can check if you only want folks who uh, opted into your SMS list as well and provided their uh, mobile phone number. See some chats, so I'll stop here for a second. A uh, question from Marsha, is this something that would be initiated by a leader group at the county level? I'm not sure I understand the question here, um, I would say that uh, right now, Civic Shout um, does not offer uh, geographic targeting. Um, and so uh, it's, it's for uh, organizations and campaigns that wanna grow a uh, national email list, um, sort of nationwide in the United States. Um, we do plan to roll out um, geographic targeting um, uh, at some point. A uh, question from Andrew. Uh, I'm guessing the suppression list can't be auto synced um, directly from Action Network. That's correct. We did try to make that work, um, but there's a, a you know a rate limit on the API um, at, as there should be um, that sort of prevented us from being able to do that. We're still looking at that, and it you know it's possible that we'll find a way to do that um, in the future. But your best bet for now is to um, sort of do the suppression manually. Um, you know, one piece I'll note there is that um, once you've set up your suppression, it's really easy to um, update that. So if you add, uh, up, uh, upload an additional file um, to update your suppression file, um, you can simply do a smaller file of the new people who have joined your list since you last set up your suppression, uh, and that'll automatically append um, to the existing file. Uh, another piece to know about suppressions there is that um, everyone who signs one of your Civic Shout petitions, whether you got them to sign or we got them to sign for you, um, they're automatically added to your suppression file as well. Um, so we do everything we can there to sort of minimize how much you have to do with suppressions. A uh, question here uh, can we, uh, from Ting Barrow, can we limit where you show the petition to people in a given state? Um, not at this time. We are, you know, we do intend to roll out geotargeting. Um, as soon as we're able to. Um, we're sort of building up the partner network first, making sure we have enough um, you know, grassroots activists, potential donors, folks like that in the system. Once we have enough folks there, um, we'll, we, we plan to roll out um, geo-targeting options. A uh, question here from Kim. So for every four people that sign, um, one person gets added to our list for free. Uh, we have to pay for the other three to be added. Um, so that's close, yeah. So for every four people that sign, you get, um, so if you get four people to sign, you're gonna get their contact information automatically because you got them to sign. Um, they signed the petition with your opt-in disclaimer. You probably already have their contact information anyway because you got them to sign. Um, for getting those four people to sign, you're gonna get one credit. Once you have that one credit, we're gonna get one more person to sign um, and, and join your email community and you'll get their contact information. Um, there's no way to pay extra or anything like that to get contact information of people who didn't specifically sign up to get your emails. A uh, question from Megan, uh, do you get credit for unique signers or if one person signs different petitions, do you get credit for each time they sign up? Uh, it's the latter. They, they do not have to be unique. Um, anytime, you know, every, every person you get 
um, to sign a civic shop petition. Every time you get someone to sign a civic shop petition, um, you're gonna, um, well, every, every time you get four, you're gonna get one credit. All right, looks like that's all the questions for now. Um, and so, you know, I mentioned this buy credit button, so I'll show you how that works. Um, that's how you'll purchase credits for uh, $1.25 each. Um, so when you click that, you get a little, um, a little pop-up um, that walks you through the process of buying credits. Um, there, you know, again, these are nationally targeted, no geo-targeting options at this time, $1.25 each. Um, maximum per order is 5,000 credits. Um, that would be $6,250. Uh, minimum order is just 100 credits. So you can go in. Um, if you want to test the system or do a small buy or sort of see how it works, um, you could buy 100 credits for um, $125. Um, as soon as your order, you know, you can only have one active order uh, at any given time. Um, but as soon as your order um, has been fulfilled, you're then welcome to buy uh, additional credits on the same petition um, or on a different petition. To place an order, um, you're simply going to type in the number of credits you want to, to purchase. Um, so in this case, I type 100, uh, and the yellow button at the bottom uh, updated there, place order for $125. It's going to put the total right there, um, so I can't miss that. Um, if I wanted to do 5,000, the maximum, uh, again, that would be $6,250. Um, we do take a credit or debit card uh, at the time when you place an order. Um, at that time, we, we run and refund a $3 charge just to check the card, um, but then we do not charge for the credits until after they've all been um, fulfilled um, and you've got access to your noodle list that you, that you purchased through the system. Uh, credit cards are handled uh, securely by Stripe. Uh, question here from Kim, how do, you know, how do you know you will be able to fulfill the credit order uh, for new petition signers. Um, so we've got a uh, growing network of democratic campaigns, um, democratic state parties, uh, labor unions, nonprofits, uh, and socially responsible businesses that are using uh, the Civic Shout platform now to, to grow their opt-in email and SMS, SMS communities. Um, when those organizations um, decide to earn credits and they wanna grow their list for free without purchasing credits, um, they're promoting their petitions and sending traffic into the system. Um, after somebody signs uh, one of their petitions, um, those, that individual um, may see other petitions from other Civic Shout partners uh, in the network, um, like your organization. Um, and so, you know, almost every day, organizations are sending traffic into the system, um, sort of generating petition signers um, and helping each other grow. Uh, at the same time, Civic Shout has uh, an in-house email list, um, and we send traffic uh, into the platform uh, every single day. So every day there are at minimum uh, thousands of people signing petitions on Civic Shout, um, and on many days there are um, tens of thousands. Uh, question from Andrew, does one purchase credit equal one new supporter? That's right. Yeah, so for one credit, whether you purchased it for $1.25 um, or you earned it by getting four people to um, sign one of your petitions, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get that one credit and that will automatically be redeemed on that petition, um, often quite quickly uh, for uh, one new opt-in supporter. Um, with that opt-in supporter, you're, um, it's gonna be somebody that signed your petition so they know, um, you know they care about um, the issues that your organization's working on, um, and they, you know, explicitly agreed to get your emails. Uh, you're going to get their first name, uh, last name, email address, uh, and, and zip code. Um, if they chose to provide their cell phone number and opt into your SMS list as well, um, you're going to get their cell phone number. Um, we found that roughly 20% uh, of people are opting into SMS as well, um, but there's no extra charge for those. You just get those SMS numbers um, if, if the, the activist or potential donor uh, provides it. Great questions uh, so far, by the way. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple other things here on the uh, left side navigation. Um, so at the top, you've got uh, a home button. 
Um, this is going to bring you back to your, your sort of home screen where you'll see any petitions um, that you've published um, or, and any petitions that you've um, sort of saved as a draft without yet publishing yet. Uh, underneath that, you've got your suppressions. Um, this is where you can um, upload a suppression file for the first time. Uh, it's where you can upload an additional suppression file to um, add new supporters to your Civic Shout petition. Um, you can delete your suppression file at any time. Um, for example, if you decide that uh, you want to try to use Civic Shout for reactivation, right, and you want to use a suppression file of just your active members because you want to um, use a system to re-engage um, folks who um, may have unsubscribed or may have gone inactive on your email list, um, you could delete your full suppression, upload that partial suppression, and use that. Uh, CRM integration. Um, now I'm going to show you how to, how to set up uh, your uh, Civic Shout Action Network uh, integration via the Action Network API. Um, and so, you know, as I mentioned before, once you have a CRM integration in place, uh, people who sign your Civic Shout petitions are automatically added to your Action Network group uh, in real time. A uh, really nice feature sort of lets you uh, avoid the, uh, the, the downloads and uploads um, associated with some other platforms and, and sort of list acquisition um, tactics. Um, before we jump into that, I see a couple questions popping up. Um, so question from Andrew, for users that we drive to the site to, to sign our petition, do they get dropped into the pool to potentially be added to other petitions? Um, so I'll, I'll show you how that works, Andrew. Um, so there's no, there's no pool of people they get dropped into, um, but that individual um, activist or potential donor, after they sign your Civic Shout petition, um, they may see, while they're still on the site, they may see petitions from other Civic Shout uh, partners um, that they would then have the option to sign uh, if they chose to. And if they, if they sign those petitions with an opt-in checkbox checked, um, they would be signing up to get emails from those other uh, Civic Shout partners. Let me go back here, go back to our petition. I'll pull it up. Um, so I'm going to sign this one. I've got kind of a fake email address here. And you'll see, so, you know, if demo org here had sent an email to their list, uh, you know, signed the petition in Peach Clarence Thomas, they send uh, Josh Nelson to this petition. I click the link, I fill in my contact information, I click sign petition. Here's another petition. So in this case, they might see a petition from the Juggernaut Project um, calling on Congress to extend healthy school meals for kids. Um, this one, see there's a couple things that 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 person could do um, they could skip this petition um, if they do that um, they're not obviously not opting into um, the juggernaut projects list um, they could uncheck this box and sign uh, if they do that again they're not opting in the only way for their contact information to be shared with another partner um, is for them to have this checkbox checked um, and click that that one click sign button and they may see you know, a handful of petitions. Um, sometimes they'll see one, sometimes two, sometimes zero, um, up, up to five at, at maximum. Um, so a couple other questions here. I'll go back, looks like questions more on the integrations. Go back to the integration screen. Uh, Morgan says, does Civic Shout currently integrate uh, with NGP, um, not yet. Um, so at this time, Action Network is the only um, uh, CRM integration uh, we have in place. Um, we have a an integration pending uh, with every action. Uh, it's been pending for months. We think they're going to approve it uh, at some point. Uh, it works. It works perfectly. Um, and you know, once uh, every action approves that, um, we're, we intend to build out uh, integrations with them. Um, with NGP, Action Kit, uh, et cetera, um, based on partner needs. Uh, question from Kim, what is a, a CRM? Um, CRM, in this case, uh, Action Network is the CRM we're, we're sort of talking about here, but um, just sort of the platform that an organization or a campaign might use to um, you know, manage their relationships with supporters. Um, so you might have your, your petitions there, you might take donations, you might use it to send your emails. Um, 
for our purposes, it's really wherever you um, store your email list. Um, so going back to integrations here um, with Action Network, really easy to set it up. You know, like everything else uh, in the Civic Shop platform, we've really tried to make it um, as simple as possible. Because again, we know that um, we know that folks are are very busy, um, so we want to make it um, just very quick and simple. Um, so you'll click Get Set Up. Um, you'll see there's a step by step guide here, uh, along with a, a video uh, narrated by yours truly, uh, sort of walking through this process. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the quick version as well. Um, you're essentially going to need to go to your Action Network group um, and copy and paste your API key, uh, paste that here, and click Save and Test Connection. Um, so I'm going over to an Action Network tab here. Uh, this is a group for uh, Indian Hill Democratic Club. Um, and at the top under start organizing, you're gonna see this uh, details option. Click that and go all the way to the bottom. Um, there's one that says API and sync. Um, I'm not gonna click it here uh, because that will uh, expose Indian Hill Democratic Club's uh, API key, which is not something I wanna, I wanna share on this video here. Um, but once you click that, um, it's, it's gonna be super apparent where your API care, uh, key is. It looks like a you know, fairly long string of random characters. Um, you'll see it there. Um, you're going to copy and paste that. Uh, you're going to copy it from here. You're going to go back over to Civic Shout. You're going to paste it here where it says API key, uh, and then click Save and Test Connection. Um, if you get stuck on that, um, or really anything else, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, we can set up a Zoom call, or I can answer questions by email. Uh, make sure you get set up. Uh, and again, I'm a jo uh, Josh at CivicShout.com. Uh, going back over, see if there are any questions. Uh, looks like no, not right now. Uh, going back over to the uh, navigation on the left side, there's uh, next down is uh, order activity. Uh, so I'll click that one. So in this case, um, this is demo org. We don't have any active orders, but if you had purchased credits in the past, um, you can see the status of those at any given time. Sort of two sections here, one for active orders that you know, we're in the process of fulfilling where you still have, you know, more than zero credits. Um, inactive would be orders that um, we have finished fulfilling. Um, so suppose you bought a thousand credits uh, last week, we got a thousand people to opt in to your email list. Um, that order would be complete. So it would show up under inactive. Uh, under inactive, you'll also see um, canceled orders. I'm in fact going to go over to uh, a partner here that has an active order right now. Um, so this is the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. And so you can see um, they had placed an order on uh, May 4th, uh, last week on Wednesday. Um, they, they purchased 5,000 credits uh, for $6,250. Um, we fulfilled 3,318 of those. Um, so roughly two thirds of the way done uh, with a you know, pretty large order after six days. Um, and then, you know, it's under active because we're still working on fulfilling this one. Uh, it's got an order number for their reference. Um, and you can cancel that at any time. I'm not going to click cancel here. Uh, I don't want to cancel their, their live order. Um, but I show that so folks know that, you know, if you place an order on Civic Shout, um, regardless of whether it's for uh, 100 credits or 5,000 credits or anywhere in between, um, you can cancel that anytime. Uh, at your discretion. Um, you don't have to contact us and reach out. It's not, you're not breaking a contract, anything like that. You can just sign in, cancel your order. Um, at that time, we're going to charge you for the credits that have already been redeemed. Um, so in this case, if Wisconsin Democratic Party uh, canceled this order, we would charge them for the 3,318, um, but not for the, the remainder, the, the 1,692. Um, so there's no fee or penalty uh, associated with canceling. Um, you just pay for what you've got so far uh, if you decide to cancel. Looks like some more questions here. Oh yes, uh, Cassie, thank you for, uh, I, I, was, I was blanking on what CRM stood for, but yeah, customer relationship management uh, tool or software, that's uh, CRM. 
A uh, question from Ting Barrow, if using API, does it tag people? Um, no, it does not. Um, the, the tags in Civic Shout um, is, are, are sort of used internally um, within the Civic Shout system. We didn't want, we thought about that. Um, and I'm someone who uses Action Network for uh, multiple organizations and, and who has used Action Network for years. And where we came down on that is that we did not want to um, just push through the tags because um, everybody's got their own um, sort of, you know, taxonomy for tagging and their own uh, nomenclature around issues. Um, and we thought it might actually be unhelpful um, to automatically push through tags that um, aren't necessarily the tag that that, that organization uses. Um, that's something we're looking at down the road is um, finding a, a sort of user friendly way to do that, right, to perhaps give you, give you the option to push tags through the API integration. Um, and the ability to customize those. But at this time, um, the, no, the tags do not flow through um, just sort of the, the opt-in and the contact information there uh, and which you do, you do get which petition they signed. Um, so your next question there um, or show in their actions. Yeah, so if you in Action Network um, go to uh, target a mailing uh, or if you go to create a report, uh, under actions there on either the include side or the exclude side uh, of the action network targeting, um, you'll be able to select that civic shout petition um, and, and target, right, with a mailing or report those individuals. Um, they're going to have a prefix on there that's uh, in brackets that says civic shout petition. Uh, and then it'll have the, the name of the petition that you entered on civic shout. So in this case, uh, impeach Clarence Thomas. Um, with Action Network, if you target a report to people who signed one or more specific civic shout uh, petitions, you can use their, I think they call it bulk operations to, um, to, to add tags to those folks retroactively. Um, so that's certainly something you could do. Um, there's probably even a more clever way to do that with, um, with Action Network ladders to automate that uh, if you chose to do so. A uh, question from Andrew, if you purchase credits on a petition, does that give it some kind of priority uh, to be displayed on your platform? Um, so if you have credits, whether you purchase them and, or earn them, um, we're gonna show it to folks as quickly as possible um, until your um, credits have been redeemed, right? So if you have 10 credits, we're gonna show it to as many people as possible as soon as we can uh, to get 10 people to sign your petition. Um, and opt into your list. Um, purchased credits are not prioritized over earned credits, um, but the system is designed to um, sort of allocate impressions um, and, and views of your petition um, as efficiently as possible to get people to sign your petition um, and everybody else's, uh, right, if they've got credits. Uh, and Amy confirms that you could absolutely um, sort of automate tagging of your civic shout petitions um, using ladders, um, which would be really cool. Um, and it's something uh, I should set up, uh, in fact, for the civic shout list. Um, so just a couple other pieces to show here real quick. Um, under billing uh, on the left side, um, you'll, you'll be able to see if you have a credit card on file um, and you can see your payment activity um, and sort of your, your lifetime total. Um, you'll see a list of individual um, charges we've made to your card. Um, again, that's only going to happen if you've purchased credits um, and it's only going to happen after your um, credits have been redeemed. Um, one last piece to show real quick uh, on the team section under manage team members. Uh, you can add uh, other uh, staff or consultants and um, give them access to your Civic Shout account, right? So if one person sets up the account and you decide, oh, let's get two more folks on my team in there, uh, simply go to add member here. Uh, you're going to put in their first name, last name, and email address. Uh, and then you can choose whether you want them to be an admin or a collaborator um, with uh, sort of different, uh, different levels of access there. Um, so that's that's about it. Um, you know, as I mentioned, really simple. We tried to keep it um, very streamlined um, and just focused um, very squarely on you know what you need to do to grow your opt-in email community. Um, any other questions uh, folks have?
I see one from Fatima. If, if we don't want to be part of any organization, we can sign that. Um, Fatima, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand your question or comment. Um, uh, maybe uh, rephrase that if, if you'd like. Um, a question from Kim: Are the petitions sent out to an email we provide, or do we collect the signers' names and then inform the person we target? Okay, I think so. I think you're asking about petition delivery here. Um, at this time, we do not um, deliver the petitions, but you you are certainly welcome to do so. Um, and you can, you know, within your petition dashboard, um, going to here, you can download the contacts, um, the the you know the contact information and the names of of people who've signed your um, civic shout petitions anytime uh, in a matter of seconds. And so um, you may uh, decide to download those uh, and then email them to a decision maker, right? To, to, to Chuck Schumer or Joe Biden or someone like that. Um, you may decide to download those um, and deliver them in person, right? And have, have someone go to, to Capitol Hill and walk those into a, a member of Congress's office. Um, we definitely encourage that, um, but ultimately that's, that's on you with your petition if you decide to deliver it. Um, we may at some point um, offer that, um, but it's not something we have at this time. A uh, question from Morgan, is it difficult to manage, manage a client load as an agency? Uh, Morgan, I'm glad you asked that because we do have, um, the, the answer is no, uh, it's not difficult to manage a client load as an agency. Um, so uh, Civic Shout has um, agency level accounts. Um, so that's something you can, if you want an agency level account, you can um, specify that when you apply to join the, the partner network. Um, and the way that works, you know, it's, it's essentially the same, except with an agency level account, um, you can manage um, multiple client organizations um, with, with one login. Um, so you'll log in and you'll see, um, you know, a series of, of clients that you've added to the system. Um, you can add new clients anytime, and then you can go in and manage um, their petitions, their suppression files, um, their billing, et cetera, um, separately. Um, so very easy. It's it's designed to to be easy for agencies. Uh, comment from Daphne. Uh, it's always fun to print uh, print the petitions and 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 have a monster pile to deliver. I agree. That's a lot of fun. You know, as an environmentalist, I you know I sometimes worry about how many how many trees we kill uh, for, uh, printing petition signatures. My old my old trick there was to um, you know print a you know the first twenty pages something like that. Um, put the rest on a on a flash drive or on a CD or something, or uh, uh, and then get the get the bankers boxes and the boxes have uh, flash drives and things like that in them, and then you've got the the small stack of paper to to provide. Um, you only do petitions. A question from Andrew: You only do petitions versus direct actions that are sent to say U.S. senators. That's right. We do not have sort of um, you know letter campaigns as Action Network calls them. Um, there's no delivery. Um, to members of Congress or senators or any other petition target um, at this time, um, but you can do that uh, yourself if, you've, if you'd like. A uh, question from Morgan, can petitions be done as joint actions? Um, no, that's not something we offer. The you know, petitions on Civic Shout are um, sponsored by individual organizations. Um, so one you know, individual activist can only ever join um, one email list with one signature. Um, you know, again, after they sign one petition, they might see uh, other petitions from other partners, um, and they could sign those petitions with the opt-in checkbox checked um, and, and choose um, to, to join um, those partners' email lists. Um, one separate piece I'll mention that's, that's sort of related to the question about joint actions, there is a way that you can use um, you know, Civic Shout to uh, get more out of Action Network joint actions that you are uh, hosting or participating in. Um, so with any Action Network petition or form URL, um, you can add a URL parameter that redirects uh, people who complete that form to a link of your choice uh, once they submit the form. Uh, so to do that, you're going to add, um, it's, it's ampersand redirect equals and then the URL. So it could be, 
you know, ampersand redirect equals um, HTTPS colon slash slash civic shout.com um, slash, you know, whatever your petition is. Um, you'll just grab your direct petition link. Um, so, you know, one way to do that with joint actions um, is when you're promoting your, you know, your, your, your unique URL that you're using for that joint action to get credit for it, um, you could add that URL to re redirect to the end. Um, so you would ask people to sign, you know, for example, uh, a joint action telling um, Congress to eliminate the filibuster um, to pass the Women's Health Protection Act and, and save Roe versus Wade. Um, you could set up and redirect to a uh, civic shout petition on a similar topic. Um, so that way, after people sign the joint action petition, um, they would have the opportunity, if they chose to, to sign your civic shout petition as well. Um, and then again, for you know, you're going to be getting credit um, through the the regular Action Network joint action system and growing your list that way. And uh, everybody that signs your civic shout petition, um, for every four people who do that, um, you're going to get one credit and get one new opt-in supporter from civic shout as well. Um, so definitely a way to get. Um, sort of more bang for your buck there. A uh, comment from Elliot here. Yeah, the, yeah, Elliot says the, only, the whole platform is kind of like a joint action in a way. So yeah, one way to think about Civic Shout is, you know, it's, a set, it's essentially a progressive movement wide um, and Democratic Party wide uh, continuous joint action um, that's always open. Uh, that you can participate in at any time without waiting to be invited um, by somebody hosting a joint action. Um, and you can promote um, your own petition um, instead of whatever petition topic the host of that joint action selected. So you're going to get those credits just by promoting um, the petition that, that you wrote um, and decided was, was right for your list. A uh, question from Morgan Booker. If they, if they don't check the checkbox, what happens? Um, so if someone, so the, the check, the opt-in checkbox for people who see a petition, uh, it is pre-checked by default. So if they, if they just, if they land on a petition and they just sign, um, they are going to opt into your list there. Um, if they uncheck it and sign, um, you don't get their contact information. It doesn't cost you a credit. Um, it, it's almost as if nothing happened. They sort of, they signed the petition, they added their name to show that they support that cause. Um, but you're, you know, they, they were not uh, agreeing to, to join up your, join your email list uh, and or SMS list. Um, so you're not going to get their contact information in that case, uh, but it costs you nothing. Um, so in that case, we would uh, simply show your petition to someone else uh, who, who might want to sign and um, keep that checkbox checked and opt into your email community. Um, thank you, Amy, for sharing the link in the chat there to um, more specifics on how um, redirect URLs work on Action Network. Uh, any other questions, comments? A uh, question from Morgan here. If we have both email and SMS, can a user choose either or? Um, so we always require email. Um, the required fields are all on Civic Shot are always first name, last name, email, and zip code. Um, the SMS is always going to be optional. Um, we found through some testing that you know requiring SMS really cuts down the um, the conversion rate and sort of the percentage of people who sign the petition. So you know when you um, grow your, e your, your email and SMS communities through Civic Shout. Um, you're always going to get that first name, last name, uh, email, and zip. Uh, and we found about 20% of people um, are providing their SMS number and, and opting in your SMS list as well. Um, that can vary, right? On any given petition, it might be 15%, it might be 25%. Um, it's almost always um, within that range, uh, at least from what we've seen so far. Um, but again, there's no extra charge for those SMS. If they if they choose to opt in, um, you just get get those opt ins. All right. Well, if um, if there aren't any other questions, um, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, I would say, um, if if any other questions come up in the future, um, two best resources for you are um, civicshout.com/partners. Tons of information there. Um, explaining exactly how it works, detailed, frequently asked questions, et cetera. Um, and you're welcome to contact me uh, directly anytime. I'm happy to do a one-on-one -on -one demo for your team. 
uh, answer questions by email, jump on a Zoom and talk through it, help you get set up, uh, et cetera. Uh, again, that's going to be uh, josh at civicshout.com. Thank you so much, Josh. This was so cool. I'm so glad I finally got to see your platform. Everyone had such great questions. Um, thank you so much for joining everyone. And we'll send out a recording um, that doesn't include Josh's and I gossip at the beginning. Um, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, everybody.